Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with a review of the Jin Hao 80 fountain pen. This is really cheap Chinese fountain pen. Um, and quite honestly, one of the best cheaper fountain pens that I've used in quite some time. And I absolutely love the design. In this review, I'm not just going to review the pen, but I'm going to compare it with not one, but two very similar pens, which I know a lot of reviewers have already commented on. The first one being the Lamy 2000, but the second one being the Lamy Ion, which is a pen which I totally adore and has been in my everyday carry at work for years now. At least two years, possibly three. And I've usually had one inked up at home as well. So here we go. It's the Jin Hao 80. Now... This is a plastic fountain pen, nothing fancy, um, and I've got two of them here. Two different inks in there so you can see how it, um, how it writes, because there is a bit of a difference. Um, when I bought these pens several months ago, when they first came on the market, I was absolutely sort of, yeah, I watched some of the reviews, other reviewers got them about the same time that I did. And I thought, oh, I don't like the feel of this pen. It is too light um, when you compare it with the other pens that it's comparable to. And I love those pens, certainly the Lamy Ion. And it kind of put me off because the review is raving about the Jin Hao 80 fountain pen and saying how great it was for the cost, which it is. Um, and I was a bit sort of underwhelmed. And then they brought out a whole range of other colours. The reason I've got two of these black, all black pens with the black clips is typical ordering from AliExpress in China. I ordered a black one with the black black clip and I ordered a black one with a silver clip and two separate sellers and one of them decided to send me the black clip as well. So I ended up with two of them. Anyway, perils of buying from China. I'm not a fan of China or anything like that, but they do have one or two really good pens. So anyway, the Lamy, uh, Lamy, God, you see, this is the problem. The Jin Hao 80, very unassuming fountain pen, really, but a really nice design because it is essentially, I wouldn't say a copy, but it is very, um, very similar in design to the Lamy 2000, which I shall show you shortly. We'll talk about the Jin Hao 80 for now. It has the same sort of Lamy 2000 style clip, which is metal and it is sprung at the back, which is something that I absolutely love about the Lamy 2000. Um, nothing on the top of the cap. There is a nice taper to the whole pen and it is very much Lamy 2000-esque. Nothing on the... Uh, bottom of the finial plastic apart from the clip and it's i'll talk to you a bit about the weight in a minute pop the cap off nice solid plastic this isn't flimsy cheap plastic um, and there is a plastic section round section winged Lamy style nib, typically these come in fine, and the, the nibs are apparently interchangeable with Lamy fountain pens. So if you do want to do that, it's easy enough just to slide it off and slide on a Lamy um, nib. Black plastic feed underneath, no um, fins on there, and the section is really quite comfortable to hold. It does narrow down quite, it's just show you that it does narrow down quite a bit towards the bottom but like the Lamy 2000 and the Ion you can pretty much hold the pen any way you like um, for the length it's a decent enough length it's perhaps a little bit on the short side I'll do some size comparisons uh, with the other pens but I, I tend to hold it there and it, it is comfortable it's fine the pen does post really, really well, really securely. Doesn't add any back weight into the pen, and it's a very, very comfortable pen to write with posted. So if you're bothered about the length, not an issue. Really, really good. Practical pen. Take that off. 
Um, the filling mechanism, however, this is, let's just say, when I talk about the other pens, we'll see the differences in the filling systems. This is a cartridge converter fountain pen. And the barrel unscrews from the section, and there is a bit of a grind. It's, it's not completely smooth. Don't expect high quality at this price. And these pens come with a converter. Um, yeah, that's all I'm really going to say about it. Let's screw that back on, cap it ready for the writing sample because I will be comparing all of these pens. Now, the Jinhao 80, fairly soon after it became available in the black finish with the black clip and the silver clip, which I didn't get, which I may well get now because I, I've really started to grow and grow to love these pens. It is available now in several other colours, all of which are a bit sort of retro muted, bit, in my mind, a bit, dirty colour, they're not very clean colours, there's like a slightly dull green, there's a reddish colour, there's a few other colour options available which I may well get because I like the design of the pen. Um, the Lomi 2000 has always been a design which I've appreciated, even though I don't use my Lomi 2000 too much, however more on that later. Um, and the Lamy Ion is an absolute favourite pen of mine, so I, I, I think I may well in, <laughs> buy some other of the uh, colours for the Jinhao 80. So let's do... I don't want to turn this into uh, a total comparison because this is primarily a review of the Jinhao 80. So I have my Rodeo pad. i just... Do this now. Can't remember which inks in which pen because they are identical. Ah. The nibs of these pens almost always, from what I've seen, tend to be fine nibs. Steel nibs, nothing fancy. Checking, I've even got this on the camera. There we go. I will talk about this nib in a minute. It lays down a lot of ink, very, very good reasonably wet uh, reverse writing is scratchy and uh, no <laughs> horrible but I know some people like to uh, like to see how that is um, this ink is diatramentis Diatramentis, oh god, the name escapes me now. I believe it is Midnight Blue. Right, I shall take this piece of paper off and write with the next pen because there are differences that you should see. This is also a fine nib, obviously. I am just scribbling. I am not a calligrapher. I don't care, in all honesty, about fancy writing. I just enjoy writing. Bit drier this nib, however, it could also be the ink. 
which is an interesting one because I haven't actually had any problems with this ink in other pen, pens. I'm not saying that there's any problems with this, but Amaranth. So, oh, no E on the end. Right, Di Dimine Amaranth. That's the ink in this pen. And in other pens, I found this to be perfectly wet like every other Dimine, Dimine, Dimine ink tends to be. So let's just have a quick comparison of the two writing samples here now. I'll hold them up to the camera. One nib seems to be erring towards medium. That's this one. And this other one with the diamine uh, amaranth in it um, is erring towards a true fine. Now, that is not necessarily the nibs. From what I've found with Diatromensis Midnight Blue, it is a bit of a wet ink that tends to feather. It's fine on this Rhodia pad. Rhodia paper is usually fine, but any other cheaper papers, it tends to be a bit, bit of a show through, bleed through, feathery ink. Amaranth isn't. So there is the difference, and it feels a lot smoother to write with the Diastromensis Midnight Blue, which goes back to what I always say. It's not about the ink, the, it's all about the nib, the ink, and the paper you use. It's a holy trinity of three things we found in pens that if you get right, is a perfectly pleasurable writing experience, and if it's really wrong, it's awful. And it might not necessarily be the pen, it could be the ink, it could be the paper. So you need to get all three right. So we've got two different sort of widths, nib widths there, according to the ink. So let's talk about the other pens, which the Lamy 80 is very similar to. I'll keep this other one out of the way. Let's just use one as an example. So we have a Lamy 2000, one of my Lamy 2000s. As you can see, they are incredibly similar in design. Very, very similar. Similar length. Obviously, there's no ink window on this, whereas there is on the Lamy 2000, which is a piston filler. So there is a blind cap up here. If you're interested in the Lamy 2000, I have done a review of it. I've also covered it recently in my Our Grail Pens Worth It video. Um, I shall leave links to both of those in the description below. So click more and expand that and the links will be down there. Very, very similar clips. Very similar design. However, the Jinhao 80 is much less girthy. The diameter is not as wide as the Lamy 2000, but the length is almost the same. The Jinhao 80 is maybe a millimetre or two longer, but the caps are very similar. Um, when you uncap the Lamy 2000, obviously you're presented with the metal section. Gold nib, hooded, semi-hooded nib, the ears, which clip the cap into position, and there is an ink window. And the Lamy 2000 is, let's just pop these side by side, I'm not going to roll. Right, we use this as a roll stop. Let's just pop them. Nib, nibs parallel. Okay, so very, very not even on the centre of the camera. Very, very, very similar in length. So it's a funny thing because the weight of the Lamy 2000 is higher and it just feels more weighty. This feels, Jinhao 80 feels cheap, but it's actually not as light as I thought at first. It's comfortable to hold and it has the same brushed longitudinal ridges that the macrolon of the Lamy 2000 has to a lesser extent. There is more texture to the Jinhao 80, but they've kind of tried to copy the design apart from the nib and section. Now, the Lamy 2000 has got a lot of similarities, or the Jinhao 80 has got a lot of similarities with the Lamy 2000. 
which is why so many reviewers have compared it to the Lamy 2000. So back to the Jinhao 80. And here is the Lamy Ion, which in my opinion is kind of more of, the Jinhao 80 is actually between the Lamy Ion and the Lamy 2000, as far as the actual design and functionality goes. Jinhao 80 looks like a Lamy 2000. However, the filling system, this is where we start to find more of the leaning towards the Lamy Ion. And this is the black version, which also has a lovely different style of clip, which is sprung at the back. The Lomi Ion is a metal pen, metal fountain pen. There is a dent in this. This is my original Lomi Ion from way back when, which I've reviewed, and I will pop the link to that review down in the description below. Um, metal pen, brushed metal, so it's quite matte, top cap, it's quite solid, and a very, very distinctive, rounded, unlike the angular Lomi hooded nibs no fins underneath that section. So this is where we're starting to see the similarities with Jinhao 80 with the Lamy Ion, which is a much longer, obviously much heavier metal pen, which posts, but it's kind of long. It's not back weighted too much, but it's, it's it, it becomes a bit heavy. So I'll take that off. So really, really comfortable girthy pen to hold. I shall put these all next to each other. So if I go tip to tip, you can see that the Lamy Ion is much, much bigger. However, the Lamy Ion also is a cartridge converter filling system like the Jinho 80. And there is the main similarity. So, if you want a Lamy 2000 looking pen, then the Jinho 80 really is it. However, if you're thinking of getting something like the Lamy 2000, but you don't like piston filling systems, because I know some people don't. Some people actually do prefer cartridge converter fountain pens, because they, they tend to be a bit more convenient less cleaning, well, less, or the cleaning's actually harder. It's, it swings and roundabouts, whatever you prefer. The Lamy Ion provides a more expensive, but nowhere near as expensive um, option to the, let's, let's just pop them in ascending price order. Okay, so we've got the Jinho 80, Lamy Ion, which at last, look costs about 70 or 60 pounds and the Lamy 2000 which costs at least 1000 uh, 150 pounds so Jinho 80 a few pounds I mean you can pick them up for about five pounds something like that which is quite honestly an absolute steal but you want to know what the writing experience is like with these other pens so let's write with the Lamy Ion Oops. Now, I've just walloped a brand new cartridge into this and I haven't given it a lot of time to get going. So let's, uh, let's just try and see if this is going to, is this going to write or am I going to have to do a bit of squeezing? There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Don't usually have any issues with Lamy pens getting the feed full. So, Lamy Ion. Black. And this is a medium nib, so bear that in mind when comparing these. A bit of a skip, but literally this is a um, brand new cartridge. I haven't used this, actually inked this pen, this particular Lamy Ion up. For a very, very long time, I am using a silver version of the pen, the olive silver, which is really nice. Oops. I 
have never had any issues with Lamy Ion nibs. However, they are the typical mass-produced Lamy, Lamy nibs. Anyone who says that Lamy is great because they've got fantastic quality control, I've never had a problem with Lamy pens, things like that. And I often get criticised or comments in videos about Lamy Safari fountain pens, even Lamy Studio fountain pens that I review. And people go, oh, I've never had a problem with Lamy nibs. Well, you don't buy enough. I've got literally dozens and dozens of them. I tend to collect them. And I would say that a good percentage, maybe 10% minimum, are really, really poor nibs out of the box. They tend generally just to be scratchy rather than not bad nibs. They just need adjustment. So I'm not saying that the Lamy Ion is perfect because it's the same style of nib just with rounded rounded uh, shoulders or whatever you want to call them uh, tines so the Lamy Ion I've never had a problem but that's not to say that there will never be any problems if you get a mass produced pen like this and I really love the Lamy Ion it, it's one of my favourite pens so let's do a writing sample. Oh, the ink, by the way, is Lamy Black. Let's do the next writing sample with the Lamy 2000. Now, this is a long time since I used this pen. 2000. And this nib, I can tell, is a fine. I have a medium one as well. Gold nib. And all you Lamy 2000 lovers, especially those who've watched my recent videos as part of Vlogmas, will be absolutely screaming and I don't actually care because I'm going to say something which is probably going to upset you. Nice and wet, nothing wrong with that. And this ink is Diamine Twilight. Proofs in the pudding, people. Not the most consistent. We have on this downstroke of the B, a little bit thin, the F, the J almost didn't write, the L, the downstroke. And I, I'm not one of those people that goes on about the uh, Lamy 2000 sweet spot, because it does have a sweet spot and it's not really too much of an issue. But out of all of these three pens, I'm gonna put these in order from left to right, of which one's right best. Lamy Ion, hugely wet, hugely consistent, solid, solid fountain pen, excellent writer. Jinhao 80 with Diatromensis Midnight Blue. Absolutely solid writer. Fine, remember, medium, fine. Jinhao 80 with Diamine Amaranth. Yeah, it still writes as well as the other Jinhao 80, but it's a finer nib, and this ink in this pen is a little bit more dry. And the Lamy 2000 with Diamine Twilight, and I know this isn't consistent because they're not all the same ink, so, you know, this isn't scientific, but this just goes to prove that the Lamy 2000 is not as absolutely 100% amazing as people go on about. So for 150, 180 pounds retail price of the Lamy 2000, I'm really gonna struggle to say it's actually worth that money. If you really love the design of the Lamy 2000, 
and you like the filling system, that's one thing. If you like the design, but you can't afford it, and quite honestly, you just want something that's very similar, a good everyday carry, and a solid writer that doesn't dry out, doesn't leak, doesn't give you any issues, Jin Hill 80 is an absolute winner. So that is a really big thumbs up from me for the Jin Hill 80. I'm not saying I can't stand the Lovely 2000, but I'm sure all those people um, have already written comments down below, so... <laughs> so what? Um, yeah. Would I sell the Lamy 2000? No, because I absolutely love the design. It's iconic. It's collectible for me. Um, and I like writing with the pen. So, in a few more weeks or months, you may well see my everyday carry fountain pen rotation video. And if the Lamy 2000 is in there, then you'll be happy. If it isn't, then, yeah, it didn't really live up to the expectations of the God knows how many pens I have here inked up, which I'm using on a regular basis. So there we go, Jinho 80, fencing pen review and comparison with the Lamy 2000 and Lamy Ion. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.